Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. It wasn't that long after the invention of the aircraft that engineers began strapping guns to them. These early fighters were propeller-driven, using guns to engage their enemies in aerial battles known as dogfights. When the first jet aircraft was introduced in World War II, dogfighting didn't go away. It just got faster. The pilots of these new fighters are capable of engaging a wide range of targets in the air, on the ground, and sometimes dozens of miles away. Pilots behind the wheel of these highly advanced aircraft also have more weapon options than ever before. Though they still carry guns, many also come armed with missiles, rockets, and bombs. The F-35 is currently the most advanced fighter aircraft in the United States arsenal. Introduced into service in July of 2015, the multi-role stealth fighter features a number of advanced systems, including an incredible array of weaponry. Among these is a GAU-22A four-barrel rotary cannon. This 25mm gun can be hydraulically or electrically powered, enabling the F-35 to fire upward of 3,000 rounds per minute. Firing such a powerful weapon requires several steps on behalf of the pilot. First, he or she must arm the weapon. Next, they must align the weapon with the intended target using their heads-up display. Unlike missiles, guns do not lock on and must be manually brought to bear on the target. Finally, pilots should let their compatriots know that they are firing their weapon by calling guns several times into their comm system. As with past conflicts, the F-35 can use its cannon to engage other aerial targets or to perform strafing runs. Given the size of the 25 mm rounds, such attacks can devastate ground forces, tanks, and even buildings. Since its introduction, the F-35 has become a staple at air shows and military demonstrations, where onlookers can see the advanced fighter in all its glory. But despite all of the technology that has gone into the Lightning, it has some competition from an older, more tested aircraft. This is the cockpit of the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt, considered one of the greatest attack aircraft ever developed. First introduced in 1977, this slow-moving 53-foot-long jet boasts one of the most impressive armaments in air combat. Perhaps the most notable of the A-10's weapons is the 30mm GAU 8A Avenger rotary cannon, positioned directly underneath the nose. The rounds fired by this cannon are 50% larger than those fired by the F-35. Which allows them to do incredible damage against even heavily armored targets. In fact, the A-10 was primarily designed to provide support to ground troops. Therefore, it is highly effective at performing strafing runs and other air-to-ground attacks.
Like other modern aircraft, the A-10 is also armed with a variety of missiles and rockets. In fact, the plane boasts a total of 11 hardpoints for mounting various weapons. The most notable among which is the AIM-9 Sidewinder. Often referred to as a heat-seeking missile, the AIM-9 is able to lock on to infrared signals in the air. In many cases, this is the jet engine of an enemy aircraft. Once fired, the 10-foot missile will travel towards its target at speeds exceeding Mach 2.5. There is a certain protocol for firing missiles from an aircraft. In order to avoid potentially friendly fire and to communicate current battle conditions with their squadron, U.S. pilots call out FOX-2 when firing an infrared missile like the AIM-9. FOX-3 is used when firing a radar-guided missile like the AIM-120 or AMRAAM. Here they go. There goes one. For nearly 50 years, Air Forces around the world have flown the General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon. Though smaller than many other fighter aircraft, this single-engine jet is heavily armed and capable of reaching speeds of Mach 2 and more. The process of preparing a fighter jet for combat can take quite some time. Depending on the mission, a variety of different missiles, rockets, and bombs need to be installed onto hard points under the fuselage, on the wings, and on the wingtips. Belts of cannon rounds must also be fed into the F-16's gun. a process that needs to be accomplished manually by using a hand crank. The weapon loading and unloading process is handled by maintenance squadrons and specialized ground crew members before and after every flight. Along with other fighter jets, F-16s often take part in what is known as Weapon Systems Evaluation Programs, or WSEPs. These are formal evaluations of a squadron's ability to load and fire missiles successfully. These live fire events are far more similar to what a pilot might encounter in combat than anything that can be approximated in a simulator. Training grounds for these types of missions are typically located in the desert, where the potential for collateral damage is minimized. Here, pilots are free to drop bombs, shoot missiles, fire guns, and practice with all manner of ordnance. Though fighter jets are extremely effective weapons when it comes to both attack and defense, they are not the only option available to air forces and armies. For decades, specialized attack helicopters like the AH-64 Apache have proven themselves immensely effective at engaging forces in the air and on the ground. Thanks to their ability to hover, move vertically, and land more or less anywhere, Apaches are essentially mobile weapons platforms. They're armed with a 30 millimeter M230 chain gun under the nose. and 
for hard points for missiles, rockets, and other projectile weapons. To increase their effectiveness in combat, each Apache has both a pilot and a gunner, with the latter concentrating on engaging the enemy during missions. As with fighter jets, attack helicopter crews are frequently tasked with conducting live fire exercises to perfect their combat tactics and abilities. These sorts of exercises take place at special aerial gunnery ranges. These are located in remote areas all around the world. As with the fighter jets, these exercises are a great opportunity for ground crews, pilots, and gunners to get more experience firing their weapons. The weapons loading process is extensive, with bullets and rockets having to be inserted manually. Once in the air, the heavily armed Apache will approach the range and begin engaging targets as directed by commanders on the ground. Charlie Hotel, five, five, two, four, one, seven, nine, six. All manner of helicopters can participate in drills at these ranges. including those intended for transports, rescue missions, and firefighting. A more recent addition to the modern military's fleet of helicopters is the Bell UH-1Y Venom, or Super Huey. This versatile utility copter is not always armed, but has external stations for rockets and pencil mounts for heavy machine and Gatling guns. These allow Venom helicopters to participate in what's known as close air support. This is where the helicopters hover above a battlefield and use their weapons to attack enemy positions on the ground. In many cases, these helicopters can also land to help evacuate injured troops or deliver much needed ammunition. The Gatling guns have an extremely high rate of fire, which allows the Venom to put hundreds of 50 caliber bullets onto a target in very little time. While missiles and rockets are extremely useful in modern aerial combat, guns and high-powered cannons remain effective ways for planes and helicopters to protect friendly ground troops. The explosive ordnance is simply too hazardous to use in close combat situations. But a strafing or close air support operation reduces the risk of friendly fire significantly. Whatever the operation, communication remains the most important thing in a combat situation. By letting their fellow pilots and any potential ground forces know a weapon is being fired, Gunners and aircraft pilots can give them enough notice to take cover or otherwise protect themselves and their vehicles. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.